Good morning, West Lawn Church. Thank you for joining us here today. I am Pastor Chris. I want to say good morning and thank you for joining us as we worship and praise our God. Today, uh, after worship, you can jump on Zoom and enter the ID that is showing up on your screen right now and welcome and say hello to, to Pastor Jeff and myself from 11 to 12 today. And we know we're, we're doing that because you're anxious to see us, to talk to us, and just to uh, reintegrate back into the life of the church. So for our Passing of the Peace activity today, I want you to turn to your loved one, whoever you're sharing this moment with, and to tell them one thing that you're most looking forward to, one thing you're anxious about to return to, to uh, the worship and our sanctuary. If you're by yourself, you can send them to me or to Pastor Jeff. Shaking. Your hand will hold me still. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm Good morning, Westlawn children and families. I was cleaning out a closet this week and I came upon so many shoes. We have shoes for rainy days, which William's been wearing a lot of. We have shoes for our favorite sports games that we play. We have shoes for the summer, the beach and the pool. We definitely have shoes also for snow. And we have our fancy shoes. Sometimes we even call them our church shoes. And we have our everyday shoes, which might be the only ones that you've been wearing a lot of recently. But I today am wearing a special pair of shoes that I want to show you. These are my shoes of peace. And they're very important because they help us fight the enemy by wearing shoes of peace. Now, the word peace means to be calm, probably to be very quiet often. It means not arguing and definitely not being grouchy. We've been talking about the armor of God, and we started with our belt of truth. We added the breastplate of righteousness, and now we have our shoes of peace. You know, in the Bible, God continues to talk about his enemy, and that his enemy tries to make us worried and scared and even starting fights. So I wonder how peaceful it is in your household today. Well, has anybody been fighting over losing a board game or a card game? Has there been some yelling over somebody not replacing the toilet paper or the tissue box? What about what happens in your household when you walk through the kitchen with muddy, wet feet or bringing in a whole bunch of mulch? Or here's another one. Your mom or dad has just came home from the grocery store and you proudly announced that you just ran out of milk and bread. These are some very unpeaceful moments that may have happened in my household within the last week or so. Keeping peace can be hard, especially in week, I don't know, seven or eight of a quarantine. In the Bible, there were also many moments of unpeace, of unrest, excuse me. But Jesus, Jesus was the best at remaining calm. Even when they were arresting him, he was peaceful. Even when his friend Peter wanted to fight with violence, Jesus demonstrated peace. Paul tells us all of the time throughout the Bible about these moments, but he also says, Jesus put on his shoes of peace. I'll tell you more about these stories tonight on Zoom. But right now, I want you all to stand up. All right, if you go stomping around your living room right now, that is not being very peaceful. But if you tiptoe around, that is demonstrating peace. If you yell at your brother and sister right now, that is not a demonstration of peace. But if you would say, I'm sorry for hurting somebody's feelings, 
that is a wonderful way of showing the shoes of peace. So the very best thing that we can do when we're not feeling peaceful is we can go to God in prayer. God, can you can tell him everything that you're upset about, and God will give us peace no matter what's going on, even a pandemic. So when we put on our shoes of peace, excuse me, we can fight evil. Let me end with this, Ephesians 6.15. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. The good news, my friend, is Jesus. Have a great week. Good morning, West Lawn friends and family. Thank you so much for joining us together this way. We're so grateful to be with you and be able to worship with you. Even though we're not physically together, we know that we can come together as one heart and one voice. Please join with us in worship.
scripture reading this morning comes from the second chapter of Acts, verses 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and held everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rain, but holy trust in Jesus' name. Oh, may I 
either in him be found Just in his righteousness alone Faultless stands before the throne Friends, we continue to do great work here at your church, at our church together. Mother's Day is next Sunday, May 10th, so fathers pay attention. Uh, if you would like, on Saturday and Sunday, on 9 and 10, through the hours of 11 to 12, we are offering a special gift for our mothers to drive through the breezeway. Also, our church directories are in. You can swing by and pick those up if you participated in that. We know some are anxious to order a directory, so that opportunity will be coming later. On Wednesday, May 13th, our church is offering a free shepherd's pie dinner, also to be drive through here at the community center. You immediately just have to drive by, pop open your trunk beginning at 4 o'clock, and you'll receive uh, either a, a small portion for two persons or a larger pan for four. And also, folks, if you aren't connected to a Bible study yet uh, for our congregation-wide Acts Bible study, beginning this Tuesday, I will be leading one on Zoom at 10 o'clock until uh, the future here as we are still uh, in isolation. Um, as you can see, we are doing great things here at our church, and all that is possible, made possible by the continued generosity of your financial tithes and offerings. Without you, uh, we could not do God's work here in West Lawn and to the greater community now as we were learning uh, this virtual media. We just want to thank you for your, for your generous support and know that we receive each gift as a sacred trust, and we, and we use it as great stewards, all for God's kingdom. Let us pray. Gracious God, we, we thank you for the gifts that we are about to receive, the gifts that, that are to come. We thank you as, as we uh, seek to be good stewards, to continue to do God's work. Lord, we also lift up those in prayer today, those that are in need of healing, whether it be spiritual, physical, mental or financial, as we know the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has caused much of us distress across our community, our families, and across the globe. God, we ask for your healing touch to, to be upon those that are, that are in isolation, those that are feeling lonely, those that are feeling depressed, those that are just feeling lost right now. God, you are the great shepherd. Be with them and guide your flock to greener pastures, to still waters. Lord, we, we pray for the families that are grieving, that are mourning the loss of their loved ones. Lord, we also lift up a prayer of thanksgiving for, for the prayers that you have answered according to your will and to your purpose. All this we give thanks in Jesus Christ's holy name, our Lord and our Savior, as we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Yes. 
all my condition had a plan from the start. You are son for redemption, the price for my heart. And I don't have a context, but I kind of love. I don't understand, I can't comprehend, and I know that I need you. I run to the Father, I fall in the grace, I'm done with the hiding, the reason, the way. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend, so I run to the Father and regain it. that we're able to let you fill our hearts pray over Pastor Jeff's message as we can remove every distraction, every temptation outside of this time that we can focus on growing closer to you we thank you Lord, we love you because you first loved us, we ask all this in Jesus name Well, friends, it is, uh, it's great to be with you. It's an honor to be with you, even if it's distant like this. And as we've been looking at the book of Acts, because of the, the relevance to the, the church, the first church, and, and how we can be the church today, we've been looking at the book of Acts, and we are in the second chapter. You've heard the reading already, uh, that second, uh, 42nd verse, very familiar to, uh, to folks who have been around the church. But let me just remind you again, it says, Acts 2, 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. As we think about that, I would, uh, I would ask you the simple question. To what are you devoted? To what are you devoted? If you're my age, you might think back to, uh, uh, to a, a movie that uh, came out in the 70s, uh, a revival of, a, of the 50s theme, Greece, 
And in that movie, Sandy sings the song, Hopelessly Devoted to You. Again, if you're my age, you uh, probably have pleasant thoughts of Olivia Newton-John. But, but that, all the silliness aside, the question still comes to us, to what are we really devoted? Because we are not hopeless. Uh, we are a people of hope, a people of love, and a people of joy. And, and so as we think back to, uh, to Acts 2, and as we've been doing as a church, the, uh, the church-wide uh, Bible study of Acts, getting back to basics. Back to the basics means, uh, it's highlighted for us in Acts 2, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of the bread, and to the prayers. They devoted themselves to these things. So I would ask you today, how are we living out that devotion? How are we, and what in our lives gives testimony to our devotion to these four things. Let me briefly just break them down and, and share a very little bit about each. And the first comes from they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Now, in our church, uh, we have defined for a number of years now, for at least eight years now, we have defined a leader in our church as someone who is committed to and regular and frequent in worship, also intentionally growing in their faith, along with serving in ministry and financially committed to the life of the church. But, but important in that distinction, in that uh, lifting up of the priorities of, of a leader in the church, was someone who was intentionally growing in their faith. In other words, uh, to put it in the, the words of, of Acts 2, they were devoted to the apostles' teaching. You see, the first Christians were devoted to growing in their faith. And, and we are called to do the same. Now, that could be uh, done in any number of ways. If you find the time that we have together on these Sunday mornings, whether it's virtual or when we were together or when we will be together again, if you find the time in the sermons to be a, a teaching time, and I hope you do, uh, then that would be one way that we can commit ourselves to intentionally growing in our faith, to, to committing ourselves to the, the teaching of the apostles. Chris and I are not uh, describing ourselves as apostles, but, but we do offer an expounding upon of the Word of God. It's another reason why we uh, offer the Daily Connection videos, to, to share thoughts on, on God's Word with you on a regular basis. It's why Pastor Chris is a part of a, a, a church-wide uh, Bible study, and why I offer a Bible study in the book of Mark. Uh, each Tuesday morning. We, we want to spend time sharing God's Word with you and with any who are interested because it's the devotion to growing. It's the devotion to understanding more of God that, that we see in this second chapter of Acts. I know there are a lot of people who joke about confirmation class as something that you have to get through and then you're never seen again. Uh, there are some who may graduate from high school and say, well, now I've done that. I can check that off. But I think what you find to be true is not that at any point have we discovered all we can discover about God. Chris and I would tell you, as, as those who have gone to seminary, that the more we learn, the more we want to learn. The more we learn about God, the more we realize how much we don't yet know. And so, a devotion to the teaching of the apostles, a, a devotion to, to growing in our understanding of the faith. The first Christians were devoted to growing in their faith, and we encourage you to do the same. It also says in Acts 2 that they devoted themselves to fellowship. You see, the first Christians were devoted to being together, to spending time together. It's one of the reasons why Chris and I are offering daily devotionals. Uh, our, I like to call them our daily connection times from uh, Monday through Saturday because we know that in this time when we are separated and, and far apart, that it's important for us to find ways to feel like we are together. And so we, we offer those devotional times. I, it, it always boggles my mind how there are some who think they can say yes to Jesus. Yes, Jesus, I want you to be my Savior. Yes, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord. And then try to live out that life separated from everyone else. Try to live out that life apart from the church. It's just not a biblical model. Now, I know some of you will think, well, sure, you say that because you're the pastor and you want me to come to your church. 
Friends, I want you to go to any church, any Bible-believing, Christ-following church. West Lawn is open to you. We welcome you with open arms. But, but the important thing is that you have fellowship with other believers. I actually shared a little bit about this in one of the Daily Connection videos this week. I had to admit that as I've grown up, my parents were right. And the people I hung around with as I was growing up, the people I hung around with when I was a teenager, they influenced my life, they influenced my witness, they influenced my behavior and my language. And when they were not Christians, they influenced it in, in sometimes quite negative ways. Friends, it's important who we hang around with. It's important who we share with in fellowship. And it's important that we spend time together. I know a Zoom meeting may not seem uh, like it's going to satisfy anybody, but we want to remind you that after the service today, from 11 to 12, you'll have an opportunity to uh, Zoom in, to connect with, to have a little fellowship, ever so short, with Pastor Chris and I. And we hope that you'll take advantage of that. But the important thing to remember here is that the first Christians... And you and I, devoted to spending time together. We're better together. It also says that they were devoted to the breaking of the bread. Now, there are a lot of ways that we can talk about the breaking of the bread. But let me just simply put it this way. When I think of the breaking of the bread, I think of people who share. As I told you, I do a, a Bible study on Tuesday mornings, and we've been reading through the Gospel of Mark. In Mark chapter 6, Jesus feeds 5,000 men, and we believe that to be a, a much larger number as you add women and children. And then just two chapters later, in chapter 8, among the Gentiles, in, in the area of the Decapolis, he feeds another 4,000 people. I, I see that image of Jesus breaking the bread and sharing it with others. When we break bread together, we share with others. We share our resources. We share the things we have with other people. Early on in this quarantine, Pastor Chris even commented about uh, running low on toilet paper. And no sooner does he say that than someone drops toilet paper off at his office. Sharing what we have. It's one of the ways that we break bread together. Another way, of course, uh, perhaps you've already thought of, I think of the sacrament. I think of the sacrament and the Lord's Supper, and, and when we share in that holy meal, we break the bread together. And I think of it drawing us together in, in times of worship, where God can do extraordinary things through us. You know, one of my devotionals this week uh, pointed out the importance of worship and, and said when we truly worship, and I don't mean sit there with our arms folded or in today's language, uh, use the sermon time to, or a song time to, to run to the kitchen, when we, but when we truly, truly immerse ourselves in worship, it's like having a lightning rod to the presence of God. So as the, as the disciples committed themselves to worship in the breaking of the bread, they, they, were, they were bringing into their lives a lightning rod to the very presence of God, inviting God into their lives and into our homes. And then there's a, a, a little quip by Garrison Keillor. If you know Garrison Keillor, he, he used to talk about Methodists, and he said two things about Methodists. One, they love to sing, and two, they love to have potluck dinners. You know, there's something special when we, that happens when we eat together. Cheryl and I have opened our home the last four years now uh, through the youth auction to families uh, to, to sit down at the table together and how we have so enjoyed that time together. The stories that come out and the, the lives that are shared when we eat together. It's a good thing. So when we say the, the disciples were devoted to the breaking of bread, I, I think in terms of sharing and worship and and quite honestly, just having time together at the table, sharing in a meal together. And then finally, it says, the disciples devoted themselves to the prayers. Friends, we say it every Sunday, but we are a people who believe in prayer. We believe in the power of prayer. We have so welcomed the, uh, the flood of prayer requests that come to us uh, through emails and text messages. We appreciate your, uh, your prayer requests, and I love to hear the answers to prayer. That doctor who talked about how God was intervening in, in the hospital in which she serves, how, how someone shared with me just this week that they, they got the uh, long-awaited letter approving a, a medicine and a, and a medical therapy that, that is so desperately needed. I, I love to hear the answers to prayer, but 
we are a people of prayer. We pray for one another. I hope you pray for me and for Pastor Chris. I, I hope you're praying for the ministries of our church, even as we pray that we'll all be protected, that we'll all be united through this pandemic, that we will stand firm in our witness to God. Prayer. The disciples were uh, people of prayer and the first church followers of Jesus were people devoted to prayer. Friends, the first Christians were devoted to prayer and you and I are called to be so devoted. Now here at West Lawn, we have taken this passage. We've taken this passage that says the apostle, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and the breaking of the bread and the prayers. And we've used a little different language today. But we like to say that we are devoted or committed to the same as we refer to, to being regular and frequent in our worship, to growing intentionally in our faith, to serving others and to giving and sharing. We use the same language that the disciples used. We use the same language that we read about from these first Christians in the first church. So it says one more time in Acts 2.42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And I would ask you, to what are you devoted? To what are you committed in your life? It says at the end of that passage in Acts 2, 47, it says, and day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Friends, when you and I devote ourselves to the teaching of the apostles, to the fellowship that is unique within the body of Christ, when we devote ourselves to the breaking of the bread and to a life of prayer, God will pour out God's Holy Spirit on you and me, on us together. And God will do amazing things in us and through us, raising up the number of people who come to faith in Christ and strengthening those who are feeling so hurting and so alone during these times of separation. Friends, let us commit ourselves, let us devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship and the breaking of the bread and to the prayers and trust God to pour out his Holy Spirit on you and me and our life together. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Gracious and loving God for the many ways that you bless us, for the devotion that you have have inspired in the first church, inspire us today so that we too might commit ourselves to worship and to teaching and to fellowship, to sharing and to prayer. Lord, speak to us as you pour out your Holy Spirit on us that we might be your church even in these times of separation. Unite us through your Holy Spirit that we might stand together and stand for Jesus this day and every day. For we ask all of this in the name of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
So, friends, thank you again for joining us for worship. And, and may you find the strength and the courage and the motivation to devote yourselves this week and forever to the teaching of God's message, the teaching of the apostles, to the fellowship that is unique within the body of Christ, to the breaking of bread, and to the life of prayer that God calls us. And as you do, may the Holy Spirit fill you this day so that you can, in whatever ways are safe, go from this place to invite, embrace, and empower all to be the family of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Stay safe, stay home, be healthy, and may God bless you this week and always. Amen.